Good morning, everybody, and welcome to New Frontiers Church Daily Devotionals. Thank you for joining me in our Hopeful New Gardener series. You know, first I had talked about how falling in love with gardening had reminded me of the delight I felt when I first followed Jesus and how I felt that God was inviting us back to that sense of first love. And next, we looked at the imperishable seed. We have been born again of imperishable seed and how the seed of the gospel produces fruit in our life by the divine power of the Holy Spirit. And you know, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law, says the scripture in Galatians 5. We need that. Our nation needs that, and our world needs that. So today, i just like to take a look at the garden and share with you some of the things that God's been saying to me through that. And we are four weeks in, and as you can see, things are developing very, very nicely. Do you remember how enamored I was with the baby bell pepper? Well, here it is, growing nicely. And just yesterday, I discovered this adorable tiny tomato. They are the first signs of the harvest that is to come. But obviously there is a lot of tending to be done in my garden before I actually start to harvest my lettuce, tomatoes and peppers for my salad. I have work to do, weeding and watering, but ultimately it's God who's going to make it grow. It is really miraculous. And that got me thinking. I've always found that the metaphor of looking after a garden is very helpful when I think about cultivating my inner life with God. I am responsible for what I plant inside the fence of my life, for what blooms there, what I allow to grow, what I weed out and prune back. And you know, it's easy to look at other people's gardens and judge them. Wish your garden was like theirs, but as the sign in my study says, the grass is not greener on the other side, the grass is greener where you water it. Each one of us needs to tend to our own garden, and that is going to involve some gardening work. When Ian preached about revival on Sunday, he encouraged us to do some spiritual gardening. He talked about breaking up the fallow ground of our hearts in preparation for what God wants to do. And in my own daily reading on Sunday morning, I had been meditating on that principle of preparation as two verses jumped out at me. First, in Acts 3, when the healing of the man at the gate called Beautiful. And afterwards, Peter is explaining to the crowd, and he says to them, Repent, therefore, and turn to the Lord, so that your sins may be wiped out, and that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. And then in Joshua 3, as the people of Israel are about to cross over the Jordan to enter the promised land, Joshua says to them, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord is going to do amazing things among you. And you know, consecrate means to dedicate ourselves to something sacred, to a divine purpose. As God's people, we are dedicated to him, dedicated to his purpose, to seeing his kingdom come. We're set apart for him. Break up the fallow ground. Repent and turn to the Lord, so times of refreshing may come. Consecrate yourselves, for the Lord is about to do amazing things. There is a part for us to play. The transformation of hearts and lives for which we beseech God begins with you and it begins with me. As Ian said, it's time to tend to our hearts in preparation for what God is wanting to do in us in these days, which is to rain righteousness on us and send revival. So the garden, as a metaphor for our hearts, seems very appropriate as a picture of what God wants to do in each one of us individually and in us together as a church. And I discovered that I was in very good company with that thought as I read the revised and updated version of one of my very favourite books by Gordon MacDonald called Ordering Your Private World. But he says it so much more eloquently than I ever could as he describes our inner spiritual center as a garden. He says, 
The garden is a place where the Spirit of God comes to make self-disclosure, to share wisdom, to give affirmation or rebuke, to provide encouragement and to give direction and guidance. When this garden is in proper order, it is a quiet place and there is an absence of busyness or defiling noise, of confusion. The inner garden is a delicate place and if not properly maintained, it will be quickly overrun by intrusive undergrowth. Bringing order to the spiritual dimension of our private worlds is spiritual gardening. It is the careful cultivation of spiritual ground. The gardener turns up soil, pulls out the unwanted growth, plans the use of the ground, plants seeds, waters and nourishes, and enjoys the harvests that result. A place where the Holy Spirit self-discloses. Oh, I love that. I just love how he points out that it's a delicate place. It's just like Audriana's picture of seeing God dig so carefully and so tenderly, but digging nonetheless as he removes those things that would hinder our growth. So with the help of the Holy Spirit, I want to cultivate my garden. I want God to remove the rocks. I want to get rid of the intrusive undergrowth, those sneaky attitudes and judgments that hide under the surface, those prejudices that set us apart from other people and cause division. I want a heart that is so soft that when God walks in my garden, every footprint is visible. I want to blossom and I want to bear good fruit. You know, I will reap a harvest from this lovely garden that is on my deck, but there is tending and growth that needs to happen first. But I am way more excited about the harvest that God has promised. But there is tending to be done to prepare for that too. So will you join me in some spiritual gardening? in bringing our hearts before him in prayer so that he shows us the weeds and the rocks, the things that stop us growing in love towards others, so that we hear his guidance and direction as we seek his face to heal our land and send a spiritual revival. He is calling us to pray so that hearts and lives are transformed all across this earth. But that starts with you and it starts with me, tend into our hearts. But I am full of hope, not because of what we can do, but because of what God can do. And I'd like to finish by quoting Gordon MacDonald again. He says, When the inner garden is under cultivation and God's spirit is present, harvests are regular events. The fruits, things like courage, hope, love, endurance, joy, and lots of peace, unusual capacities for self-control, and the ability to discern evil and to ferret out truth are also reaped. We need that. Our nation needs that. Our world needs that. So today, maybe you could spend some time with God walking in the garden of your heart. Ask him to show you where it needs tending and do some spiritual gardening, but also rejoice in the fruit. Consecrate yourself afresh to him. He wants to do amazing things. <laughs>